the platform. Right. So now we'll officially uh, start the conversation. This is Talha bin Afzal. I'm the program manager and acting secretary general at the Pakistan Software Houses Association. Uh, we have our guests with us, and I would like to introduce them one by one. I would, I would start with the Shahzad Shahid. Uh, Shahzad Shahid is the CEO of TPS uh, Worldwide, one of the biggest fintech companies in Pakistan, and a leading payment solution provider. Uh, so they have numerous commercial banks and financial institutions uh, as the clients on board uh, in, in, within the country and abroad. He's also serving as the chairman of Pasha at the, uh, right now, and um, he's, he has been representing Pasha both at national and international platforms. Uh, then we have Shamim. Shamim is the co-founder and CEO of Genetic Solutions. She, she is actively involved in improving and promoting diversity in the Pakistani landscape. So kudos to that. Shamim is also currently serving as the CEC member uh, at Pasha and leading the uh, diversity and inclusion committee. Um, under the leadership of uh, Shamim, Pasha recently launched Pro Women, uh, which was powered by Code Girls, one of another initiatives. And uh, this one, uh, the, the candidate with Pasha is also led by her. Thirdly, we have Mujib Zahoud. He's the managing director at S&P Global Pakistan, one of the biggest BPO companies and exporters in Pakistan with more than 2,500 employees. Mujib is also heading the S&P Global offices in Argentina and Thailand. He's also serving as the vice chairman of Pasha. He has recently played a vital role on behalf of Pasha in promptly resolving the IP whitelisting issue for BPO's in call centers. And last but not the least, Monis Rahman. He's a serial entrepreneur. He's the CEO and founder of Naseed Networks and also Rosie.pk, one of the biggest job portals of Pakistan. And in 2000, uh, he, he's, he, uh, Naseed Networks also runs uh, Mihnati.com. I might have pronounced it wrong, but he, he can correct me as we move along. Uh, so as we move the conversation ahead, um, I would like to have starting remarks from everybody. And then uh, Shamim will give a brief introduction of, about Candid with Pasha. Just for a minute. Can I get started? Yes, we yes we are online. Awesome. So um, uh, thank you so much, um, Shazad, uh, Mujib, and Monis, for your time today. Uh, just wanted to give you a brief and the audience a brief about what Candid with Pasha is and why we thought the initiative was important. So Candid with Pasha is an online platform with a core objective to bring industry experts on board and ask the burning questions pertaining to the uh, problems of the work that the Pasha member companies and other IT and ITS companies face each day. We've been active on the uh, platform, the, the WhatsApp. You see that you know there are many questions around the survival and growth of uh, uh, the companies on cyber security, global opportunities, and uh, domestic industry issues, uh, a lot around export issues and how to return employees, uh, and you know, for um, so, uh, questions around different verticals like e commerce, etc. So, we intend to answer these questions with the help of our experts and choose a specific topic issue. We make this initiative worth it. Grateful if our audience and member companies share their feedback with us regularly for improvements and also give recommendations for topics for upcoming webinars. So yeah, that's that's how I wanted to start this off. Thank you so much, and let's move on to Talha. Thank you, Talha. Great. Thank you very much, Shani. Uh, so um, during these uh, during this pandemic, um, we have seen a lot of changes, especially uh, the companies transforming themselves digitally, and uh, you see. Uh, we, we always talk about the digital transformation of government and citizen services. But then we that this pandemic, our IT companies also to be digital transform. So um, I would like to um, ask uh, uh, Monis first, what measures have you taken in your organization to carry digital transformation? 
No, they think, you know, um, so I run two organizations. I'm actually a part of two organizations. One is rosie.pk, which is a jobs platform, and we've got the Manatee platform in the Middle East. And then there's a FinTech as well, Finja. And both of these two organizations have been uh, championing digital kind of mantra for ages. Rosie was taking jobs from newspapers and offline means online. Marapura workflow in the office was very much online. You know, the support system is all cloud-based. The sales CRM, the app that the sales team uses, it's all cloud-based. Um, and uh, we, we had this unfortunate incident early in our, in our history where some former employees stole the source code to our main platform. And uh, we had a whole case with the Lahore High Court and IG police and all of that. And Uske Baad, we created a network infrastructure in the office where everybody worked on a virtualized environment served from the server. So all of the desktops exist in a server room in the office and every employee has a laptop of their own. So when we went to work from home, it was actually a very seamless migration because what Pura environment was already in the office on the servers for the IT team. So that was very good. Uh, the sales team, the support team, the finance team, everybody was already on the cloud. So Hamariliya work from home has ended up being really productive. Um, and from the Finja side, we had um, our, our, our main product is a salary payments processing tool that we used to call Payroll Plus and now is called Finja Business, which is now integrated with a lot of the banks like MC, uh, like, you know, with Mizan Bank and Easy Pesa and, you know, Pesel Bank. It lets organizations process salaries, payments, the collections um, through a web browser anywhere they are. Uh, very, very easy to do. And we've seen a huge uptake in that. So in terms of the core values of the business, they were very much uh, tuned to what's going on today. However, uh, the business environment has been very challenging. On Rosie's side, you know, as I was talking about earlier, most companies aren't hiring. Most companies are trying to figure out how not to lay off. A lot of them are laying off. So the business has been impacted pretty drastically as, as kind of hiring, hiring has uh, slowed down. Uh, I think I'll, I'll bring that question uh, after some time about hiring, but I want to key, uh, route this question to, towards Shahzad. K, uh, one of the biggest fintech companies in Pakistan, um, PPS, you know, they have their own challenges of data breaches and everything. How did your company transform and move towards work, uh, work from home arrangement? Ji, assalamu alaikum. Um, thank you for the question. Uh, so, uh, you know, there are things that you need to do, uh, not because they are good to do, but they are must to do, right? So as an organization which is serving customers across the world for a mission critical 24 by, 6, 24 by 7 systems, it is not a choice to become unavailable for the customer. So what we uh, did was we actually started back in 2017, we started to work for um, you know, we started to work towards work from home facility, but we never took it seriously, right? It was more of an exceptional situation for a couple of employees who wish to work from home for a certain situation. In this 2020 uh, pandemic, we started working in the mid February uh, as this pandemic sort of, you know, started to, uh, to increase, we started to sort of take it seriously. And we had this infrastructure that we ramped up and started to send people to work from home from February. And when we reached the mid, mid March, uh, in fact, it was, I think Friday, uh, I believe 19th or 20th of March, uh, we decided that we will work from home the entire company, all right? The country had not gone into lockdown then. So we had ever since our working from home, our entire 425 persons, since uh, 20th of March, we are, we, are, we are working from home. So two things to it. One is the mindset, you know. So you have to take it gradually, you know, face by face. Do it for 10 persons first. Uh, understand the kinks, iron them out. Increase it to 50, 100, 200, and 400, right? So because we were early on and started doing it, I think by, by mid-March, we were prepared for it. Uh, the customers were also taken on board early on in, in March about, our own business continuity uh, sort of procedures. 
so they were on board with us about the vpn connectivity and everything so i believe all in all the work from home has become has actually sort of helped us a lot rather than become any uh, impediment or barrier to the customer services right so we are strictly following work from home we are not going to customer side they have an exceptions where we have to go for for some very complex uh, you know cut over of the system we go there but that's very select sort of you know few and far between i have some employees who are stuck in in different countries but that's a different situation altogether so i think work from home has been good it's just about the way we have taken it in our experience phase by phase uh you know and and you know gradually so business overall we think is is in good shape because it in its own uh, space has much more potential now than it what used to be last year thank you shahzad I, I, i would like to raise the same question for the uh, mujib uh, because uh, mujib being one of the biggest uh, bpo uh, and call centers uh, running in pakistan with 2500 employees how is experience you know to digitally transform everything take it home you know set up the infrastructure at home how was it for you uh thanks salab a couple of corrections you've uh, you've added thailand to my list of territories which is uh, it was it's philippines um i would thailand we have a small uh, employee population in also right. while we definitely fall in the uh, it enabled services and outsourced services uh, territory uh, space we are a captive office uh, snp global is a provider of analytics research insights uh, and data to companies and countries around the world uh, we have about 1500 employees in in pakistan and very similar to what uh, i think shahzad and munis uh, both spoke about uh, while uh, out of the 1500 people um, i would say about 30 to 35% were equipped with laptops Uh, our workflow is such that most of our people work with uh, multiple screens uh, there are other specialized uh, software and hardware requirements that people have so traditionally we'd always handled work from home also as an exception at least in our uh, for in for most of our countries uh, people worked you know from home uh, women coming back from maternity leave or people employees who were Uh, facing specific situations so we had a little bit of a test and some infrastructure in place uh, in the form of vpns in the form of uh, you know cloud based applications etc uh, i think munis made the point earlier about virtual desktops we were just dipping our toes into using ekmi and amazon workspaces both are excellent uh, virtual desktop solutions as well so uh, for us we uh, had to move uh physical desktops uh that people were using along with the two screens that they had uh to their houses and very similar to i think the this timeline that sh- that shahzad shared uh we were uh successful in doing that over a couple of days and well before the government initiated any kind of uh, restrictions or or lockdown uh for almost 90% of our people were equipped uh, to work from home we also uh you know have being being a large uh, entity having presence around the world we were able to learn from some uh instances that happened in our china offices obviously much earlier uh we we had initiated a global steering committee uh, that was headed by senior most leaders that were giving us insights so again there were advantages that we gained as a result of being part of a large entity Uh, that allowed us to leverage some of those resources um we uh, also were able to equip our people with the ability to you know uh, instead of coming to the office and risking uh, gather you know sort of, sort of not following social distance social distancing guidelines we were able to equip them to buy any you know hdmi cable or a keyboard or a small pieces of peripherals that they were missing so i think all of those support mechanisms on the technology side uh and then i think as shahzad alluded to this there is also a a human um adjustment skill support side to it as well perhaps we which we will get into but i think uh to answer your question what will help companies large small medium in 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 sort of digitally transforming number one obviously look for available technologies you don't have to reinvent the wheel there's a lot of out, stuff out there that can help you number 2 make that decision 
as quickly as possible. It's not only, you're not just doing it for fighting the pandemic, you will find that it will help you in the long term as well. And uh, then just execute. Uh, I think those are, those are three things fundamental for any transformation and similar for the, for the digital transformation as well. Thank you, Mujib. Uh, I mean, since you're running a services company, so it, it, it's just an idea that yeah, services company ke liye to bahut asana hai transform karna hai. It's just internet and laptops. We, they don't need special VPNs because either they're own the teams are only interacting with themselves or some of them are interacting with the clients. So how was your experience for this kind of digital transformation? So, uh, Services company clearly comparatively yeah, it was easier, uh, better than you know the other BPO of fintech companies. However, um, we were also lucky. Uh, achha, we 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 give a lot of uh, time and uh, uh, you know um, focus a lot on security as well. So saying that the services company who have a laptop and take or get big internet connection lagake that's not how it works. We have a, a set VPN in place and everybody and anybody who wants to uh, access the network has to come through the VPN through proper firewalls. Hamara jo hai, we already had a 20% of our team working from home. So if you know, we have a very good diversity ratio at work. So girls usually tend to not wanting to sit late. So they, but they have deadlines and they need to complete those. So uh, you know, usually uh, senior management and girls would go home and they, they would do their work in regular days. So when the pandemic hit, uh, and even before uh, uh, the government uh, announced the lockdown, what we did is we started to, um, you know, slowly uh, move our teams home. Like, so we started with 10% and then we moved on to 24, 25% and, uh, and so on. So by the time uh, that the lockdown was in, uh, uh, around 90% of the team was working from home. And things were looking okay, but as I it was just a very smooth sailing for us. So I think in the first three days, uh, we lost our uh, main server. Uh, and it went down. So we, we had to spend 48 hours to get that back up. So yeah, and then uske baad, a week after that, we had a, um, a security breach, a huge one. So we had to uh, look into that. So what happened uh, through this pandemic is we, we came out stronger and more refined. And now, you know, we have so the small, uh, uh, you know, uh, things that were missing in our security and in our infrastructure, we fixed those during this pandemic as well. But all in all, I think, um, as a services company, जो हमारा fair था work from home का कि जी पता नहीं teams को micro manage करना पड़ेगा या वो काम नहीं कर पाएंगे, I think that was that was a really bad bad assumption or 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 a wrong assumption. Things that teams actually worked really well and you could identify their strengths and weaknesses while they are working from home and then you could work with those. So I think all along it was a good experience. बल्कि हम तो अब ये भी सोच रहे हैं कि once the pandemic is done we should actually move uh, at least 30 to 40 percent of the team to work from home again you know like to save real estate and add more people to the team i think that that brings me to the my next question because uh, you know since you're all running big organizations so yahan pe dynamics change ho gaye bilkul hi aur management style bhi change karne ki zarurat pesh aa rahi hai by using all the tools so just as a certain disconnection create ho jata hai so what what changes did you have or did you guys have to make in the management style to allow both people to work, uh, both people and work to run seamlessly so um, you guys needed more vigilance or you had to trust their own instincts so that they, you know they'll be working with uh, seamlessly during these uh, during this time from home and I would like to, uh, you know, take this question first to Moish because, you know, it, it, it's a, quite a round, uh, round of talk and uh, he's been quiet for a long time now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I think one of the things that we all know as leaders, uh, even in peacetime right now, of course, we're at wartime, communication is extremely important for all of us. We have to communicate with our organization from the top down. The more we communicate, the the gaps shorten, the trust, the insecurities, um, uh, all of that just goes away. So we have to really do a good job and spend a lot of effort in doing that. And I want to talk a little bit about my journey. You know, we started off um, in office in my home and then we grew to a smaller office outside. We had a commercial office and then a larger office over three floors. And then I said, wait, I want to flatten the office because it's hard to go up and downstairs and you lose a lot of interaction. 
So we got um, a very nice office with just a huge floor, two huge floors. It's very flat and it's an open office. Everybody's on an open desk and the communication was just amazing as a result. And we got a lot more out of the team. Then we went to work from home. Ironically, what happened was we mandated in the morning, every team is doing a Zoom call. So a Zoom call happens within teams and then into a larger team. So people are communicating incredibly. And on your WhatsApp and Zoom, we're having 20 meetings a day in between small groups who want to speak to each other. I, I have a question for a person. I just click it, you know, the WhatsApp. I do a video call and I start talking. And what's happened is the communication is better than if I was sitting in my flat office because the person I wanted to talk to is all the way at the other end. I'm like, I thought, yeah, I'll be named half an hour later. I'm going to go and, you know, I'll go around and speak to them. But now the communication has just gotten so incredibly strong that it's been very productive where you build virtual teams in a second. You add these three people on a call. You get this done, another few people. The side effect has been that we're a lot more connected and wired than we were during peacetime. So, you know, even now I'm at work and my team is doing stuff, not because we're asking them to, because the days are flowing into the night to the day. So I think for us, it's really saying, okay, now stop working, buzz, it's enough. And um, so I think the communication is one of the big wins for us. And I think even if we go back to the office, I still think at my desk, I'm just going to click the WhatsApp button and do a video call with the guy across the hall to increase the communication. And we've learned that we can work from home. We were skeptical before whether the people would have a discipline to be able to do it. There's no doubt about it now. And I think that's going to have a great ROIs for all of our IT companies. It's probably bad news for the real estate sector. Thank you very much. I think, yes, it's, it's, um, it, it's worrisome for real estate sector and it's good, always good to hear from an employer that you may stop working now because it's too late. Uh, Shazal, I want to bring this question uh, to you now and I want, uh, I want you to elaborate that how did TPS as an organization uh, ha is handling or changed its management style during these times? So regardless of uh, you're talking about work from home or you know working from office, uh, like, like Mona said, communication is the key, okay? Uh, communication is the key, but the other few factors are transparency and trust. And that is, uh, you know, top to down and, you know, bottom, bottom to top, bottom to top. And this has been, this has been in the, in the culture and DNA of TPS, you know, uh, throughout. So as people are working from home, we actually are first, we trust them for their, uh, for their integrity. One second, we know, our, our, our tracking is not about how many hours they work on which item. Our tracking primarily is are they goal oriented? Are they finishing their task you know, on the date when they're supposed to do it? And so, so this work from home has given them this flexibility of time. And, and so, so this Ramadan timing has actually given them far more flexibility because they can sort of you know, sleep early, early the day and then work you know, late, late at night or whatever time they suit suits any specific you know employee based on its own sort of you know uh, preferences and you know family system so it's about and and other thing that we have learned is that our our assumption that people work more when they are together in close proximity this is not so true one so we have by the way adopted ms teams um, so we actually have sort of you know the the video and the, and the audio call on ms teams just like Moni said I mean, it is as if that somebody's sitting, you know, in the in the next room, and you are and you are connected, right? So you don't even feel that you're working from home. So it is that level of engagement, but you also have that level of sort of you know flexibility that you are at your home and you can actually sort of pick the right hour for you to work, right? There are certain other angles to it as well. So one thing is we have seen a productivity to actually has improved as an organization of one person. We think it, it, it has improved, but, but there are some other sites which you have to be cognizant about and we are, we have keep thinking about them. And, and that is because I'm sure, and, and, and I think uh, the same problem will, will Bujib face over time is about not everybody had this kind of internet facility, which is allowing them because now everybody is under, so there are two things. Work is one is work from home 
and this is working great you know why we are locked down the moment you close this lockdown you will find people in the shopping mall when you are when you are trying to call him up and discuss a discuss a project or or you know some 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 technical challenge today work from home is working much better because you assume that 90% of the times persons will be available at their home with their laptops so things will be, will become difficult once the once the lockdown eases up so yes culturally people have adopted to it but the management has to be cognizant that it cannot continue as is and they have to transform their own uh, sort of you know style of management and you know work distribution in a way where the new change the new normal once the business the markets open up when the sort of you know traffic is on the road how how are you going to engage your employees you know without intruding them into their into their personal times and while they actually are not at their homes so this is the next phase of our sort of deliberation that we are going through you know one is so do people have the facility at home you know the cooling facility the electricity the space you know the peace of mind you know the the noiseless area throughout this is one area that we are looking at and the other area is beyond a lockdown how we how we are going to manage things so so this is the next stage of our of our but like i said since we start early on so we don't have a situation then but to continue successfully this work from home this is the next area to concentrate on and and resolve right thank you shahzad mujhe bhai main isko thoda sa mold karunga aapke liye because uh, snp global as you said you, you know uh, you had to uh, transport all those uh, some of the equipment to their homes but, and meanwhile all this all was this happening you have as you said 1500 employees there so uh, and as i also know ke snp global mein kuch time shifts bhi use ho rahe hote hain people are working in day, during days yep. during yes so uh, how difficult was it for you and how uh, and then the the change of management style on top of yep. that Yeah, yeah. I I think it was uh, as my colleagues both Shahzad and Monas have pointed out, uh, it was difficult. Uh, no, no questions around that. But you know, uh, as I think Shamim said, you you have you have to do it. It was not a choice, right? And I think uh, kudos to our entire team, each and every one of them. Just like other people have mentioned, I think people really responded, uh, took ownership. Uh, those are value systems that you build. देखें ये ऐसी चीजें नहीं है जो एकदम से पेंडेमिक आया तो उसके साथ उसका साइड इफेक्ट ये भी आ जाएगा आप ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की वैल्यूज जो बिल्ड करते हैं जो परफॉर्मेंस मैनेजमेंट के पैरामीटर्स सेट करते हैं चाहे वो रिपोर्टिंग है ऑन परफॉर्मेंस वो सब चीजें आप इसी तरह की इवेंचुअलिटीज में भी आपको हेल्प करती है ना सो इन सिचुएशन लाइक दिस आई थिंक दैट वैल्यू सिस्टम दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लाइक आज inculcate in their employees uh of taking ownership you know not micromanaging just like shahzad said managing to timelines versus how mu- how much time were they on a productivity system or something like that i think all of those made it a lot easier uh making certain that we you know train our managers on very quickly again people know this uh, in a lot of scenarios but very quickly teach them to be empathetic because you know no one of our employees might be looking after somebody who's sick in their house uh people have kids kids are not going to school i mean to the points that shahzad made one of the challenges that we faced little a uh, little in islam uh, or uh, in pakistan but more in other geographies uh kids were in school parents would go to work now kids are at home as well so how do you balance that so we designed you know there are free resources available और इस पे बहुत सारे हमारे सुनने वाले और जब मैं ये बात वैसे भी करता हूँ तो लोग कहते हैं जी तो आपकी बड़ी कंपनी है आप लोग कर सकते हैं आई वॉन्ट री आई टू रेट ये सब फ्री रिसोर्स अवेलेबल हैं देर कोर्सेज ऑनलाइन दैट पीपल कैन यूज दैट यू नो जस्ट विल हेल्प यू इन दिस सिचुएशन दिस इन इकोनॉमिक्स कोर्स अवेलेबल एज वेल ऑन लिंक इन लर्निंग दैट जस्ट यू नो इट्स थर्टी मिनट शॉर्ट कोर्स दैट यू नो टेल्स यू how to be more comfortable while working from home what are some postures that you should take what so we we gave those resources to our people uh, as i shared earlier we tried to give we try to equip them and empower them trust them that they will make wise decisions and this is not just a particular category of employee this is uh, a, you know a, an entry level employee right up to the more senior level uh, employees as well 
and bar, barring very few exceptions, which I guess will always be there, everybody responded really, really effectively. And that is what I think helped us overcome uh, this sort of situation or this, this sort of challenge. And as all my colleagues have attested, we didn't see any productivity drop. Again, maybe one or two exceptions due to technical reasons. Uh, that, and you know, the case of uh, not very strong domestic internet infrastructure in Pakistan. That's, I know Shazad has articulated this in our own, uh, in our own capacities. We've you know, really gone to the government and sort of tried to influence that as well. The need to have strong domestic infrastructure uh, uh, structure when it comes to internet or electricity, or those kind of things. Uh, but I think these are some steps. Empathy, training. Uh, another attribute that we're now realizing, we, we knew that this would happen, uh, is you know, uh, giving people wellness resources uh, that help them, that encourage them to be mentally uh, you know, relaxed, uh, get them help that allows them to you know, handle this stress. It's a stressful situation uh, for, for a lot of people. Some of us you know, don't pay too much attention to it. Others might react differently uh, to it as well. So getting, as an employer, getting those resources to our employees, I think is super, super critical uh, in, these, in these times. And it, it does not take a large entity to do that. It can be done by smaller entities or medium enterprises as well. I think, thank you very much, Umajibai, that you have mentioned that we uh, companies as organizations need to take those mires where, and they also need to be uh, empathize with their employees in these cr crucial times. Uh, I would like to bring the same question to you, Shamin, that uh, I'm, you know, while interacting with you very frequently in the past few days, I've, uh, I've seen that you're always on the meeting internally or externally. But how has your experience been with, uh, with the management style change in your organization? Right. Uh, so thank you. I think uh, uh, my other um, panelists have already mentioned uh, quite a few things. So, you know, uh, empathy tops the chart, then uh, communication, communication, communication. That's actually very important to make sure, like you said, I'm always in internal and external meetings all the time. So that's important. And one of the points that Shazad just made, which I think I... Um, I may have, uh, you know, uh, overlooked is uh, because right now I feel that the teams are doing really well. But the fact of the matter is, right? So when this closes down, then what will happen? But I think then going back to Mujib's point, I think it's, it's the values that you inculcate in your team right from the beginning that trickle down into the, you know, all the way to the entry level people. So uh, once the values are in there, I think it's, it's uh, uh, I don't think we should have more than a three to 5% droppage or in terms of quality, we haven't had it so far, but every organization has underperformers. And I think this is a very good time to identify those underperformers. Shayad, you are closed environment, you are working in control groups, so you are not able to identify who the actual underperformer is within a team. But when they're working from home, you can actually, you know, just point that this guy is the underperformer. So it's, it also works in that way and it has worked for us as well. So uh, I won't go through all the points that they have gone through, but there's one thing that I have seen very frequently and that I want to mention uh, is actually two. We'll come to the tools, but um, the one thing is resilient being resilient. So that's that's very important. Um, one of the things that actually worked out for us uh, uh, being a company uh, that is under 100 people right now is that we have uh, monthly meetings with, with uh, you know, monthly employee meetings where we call all the employees and then we talk to everybody as in if it's a, it's a one hour meeting where we talk to them about company growth and the problems that we're facing and other stuff. So we get one-to-one -one time with the, with, with the employees. So uh, you need to build resilience in, into your team. So three things that will actually help you if the teams know their, uh, their own skills, that's very important. So working from home, if the teams are confident with their own skills, then they will do really well. So similarly, if they're self-organized. So one of the other things that helped us is, um, you, know, you know, we've been using Scrum uh, and I'm so sure some of most of you have been using other forms of Agile, but we've been using Scrum for around three to four years now in the company and, and most of my team and the people are very self-organized. So that is one of the skills that we developed over time. So that really helped uh, to make sure that, you know, they were resilient. The third team is family support. They, if they have good family support, I think all these three factors make it an all-in-all -all win. 
बट ये एक्सपेक्ट करना है कि आपका एम्प्लॉई जो है ये तीनों चीजें खुद ही से कर लेगा ये वुड बी एन ओवर किल मेरा ख्याल है कि यू नीड टू स्टेप इन एंड यू नो यू नीड टू सो लाइक मेक श्योर दैट यू गिव दम वर्क दैट एक्चुअली resonates to their skill set that's one of the things you need to plan uh, you know uh, their schedule their work day what actually works for them because like uh, you know uh, mujib said ke schools band hain bacche ghar pe hain so one of the things that i am having a problem and i'm i'm a very big uh, uh, supporter of work from home and i've done uh, because i travel a lot i do a lot of work from home uh, most of the time and i'm really good at it but these days you know i'm not performing that well wajah ye hai ki pehle sirf main work from home kar rahi hoti thi ab puri family kar rahi hai so you know people are sort of like overstepping each other's uh, time or uh, and space so these are things that you need to be uh, you know empathetic and compassionate about so if you are then i think it uh, it's a win win so i think it's the value system at the end of the day or the other things that uh, jaise mujib ne kaha and the shahzad also and mohammed also mentioned those items is ke uh, tools are very important the right tools in place and tools are not expensive most of them are free so um, you know for, for us for example hum bahut uh, so we don't use uh, uh, microsoft meeting or those tools we use hamare yahan bahut hi simple do tools istemal hote hain for communicate for uh, uh, project management one is basecamp we are very big on basecamp and um, um, so so that is one of the uh, it is it's a paid tool but it's really good when you when it comes to customer management and team expectations and setting you know goals for the teams the other jo communication tools hain hamare paas apne in house tools hain so we use web issues we use spark and other uh, tools like skype and all so we don't basically tie the team to a specific tool in terms of communication so whatever works for them at that point प्लस ये कि माइक्रो मैनेज बिल्कुल नहीं करना है स्पेशली वर्किंग फ्रॉम होम दैट वुड बी नो नो फॉर एवरीबॉडी वाज लिसनिंग बिकॉज यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट यू गिव देम टारगेट्स एंड इफ दे मीट दोस टारगेट्स देन देन दैट्स फाइन आई डोंट केयर दे वर्क फाइव आवर्स डेट फिफ्टीन आवर्स डेट दैट्स नॉट माई कंसर्न एज लॉन्ग एज दे चेक इन दो टारगेट्स एंड देव मेट द डेड लाइन्स दैट्स गुड इनफ फॉर मी Right. Thank you very much, uh, Shamim. Before we move on to the next questions, I have a small rapid-fire round just for like next three, four minutes, and uh, I would like to uh, start with the the chairman, Shahzad Shahid. Or may uh, I would not like you to answer the, those questions as my uh, boss. I would like you to answer them as uh, the CEO of TPS. Uh, so. Um, just a few questions and you can uh, you can uh, always uh, you know uh, uh, choose not to answer them or uh, take your time to politically answer them correctly um number one pasha one word uh huge potential but needs a lot of time uh google documents I'm very bad at it. <laughs> um, chairmanship, big responsibility, and often you feel you are alone. Uh, government, you, this is the time to praise them. All right. So, son of, you know, a good friend of mine told me about this this great analogy. It's like a big ball, which has no dimension, no handles, right? so you do not know which side of the ball you are you just keep rolling it at time it rolls in the right direction at time it rolls in the wrong direction so this is the government right and one last thing gmail versus outlook outlook i i really i i i still am struggling on how to how to sort of sort and organize the gmails right so i so i download them all on my phone and then use it use it the simpler simpler mail tools good thank you very much um i'll bring the uh, rapid fire round to shamim now number one um code girls uh very proud very proud for the uh, uh, on this uh, on this initiative uh pro women it's uh, still in the making a lot of effort need needed so still in the making need secretariat's help on it um layoffs ki list uh no zero and last but not the least pasha secretariat uh work in progress so pasha secretariat is work in progress 
Right. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to bring the rapid fire to Mujib. Go for it, man. Go for it. Number one is IP whitelisting. Oh, a pain, but thankfully taken care of. Uh, personal data protection bill. अरे यार बहुत लंबा है भाई अभी बहुत टाइम लगेगा उसको पढ़ने में ऑफिस स्पेस फाइंडिंग एन ऑफिस स्पेस इन इस्लामाबाद माय छेड़ बन गई है तो मेरी अब जहां पे गवर्नमेंट फंक्शनरी से लेके प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने सिर्फ नहीं पूछा बाकी हर मिनिस्टर ने सब लोग पहला सवाल ये पूछते हैं आपको जगह मिली कि नहीं मिली उनका जवाब ये है कि अभी तक नहीं मिली है और आप शायद जरूरत भी ना पड़े विद वर्क फ्रॉम होम वी स्टिल विल बी लुकिंग फॉर स्पेस बट मे बी नॉट एज बिग ऑफ स्पेस एज वी वर लुकिंग फॉर अर्लियर माई फीलिंग्स फॉर फैसलाबाद यार्स अ कर्व बॉल आई हैवन बीन देर फॉर अ वाइल सो आई डोंट नो वट वट फीलिंग्स आई शुड आई शुड रियली हैव it's a beautiful town i guess right. that's the it's a, it's a lame answer but that's the best i can come up with i think i i heard somewhere from the, uh, from somewhere that you belong to festival uh um, somewhere near festival not really festival okay Kestava. okay, yeah. okay. That, because that's why it was in my list right the the, the last uh, round of it with moris number 1 rosy it's not r o s y it's r o z w -E. Moish, uh, we can't hear you. Sorry. Uh, no. Rosie, the love of my life. You know, impact my mission. Uh, number two, uh, uh, Lahore. Lahore is love. Lahore is home. Um, Jim. Survival. uh i can't live without it now uh i need you to be very careful with the last one miss sadia khan so i'd like to retract the love of my life question when you asked me about rosie i think uh, it should be reapplied here to sadia khan and rosie is number 2 it's a close number 2 good good call one is good call <laughs> well done this is being broadcasted this is you, you know everyone's going to see this 100 years from now so very important to get this right great thank you very much now we'll move on to the uh, next questions um so uh, since we have all talked about the tools and techniques with the work from home arrangement and uh, but i would like to uh, you know ask some specific questions especially uh, first of all starting with shahzad Uh, you know the fintech applications and solutions require more security and data protection than other domains uh, how does your company handling uh, uh, how is your company handling it now which were the sub domains that had to be suspended due to a fear of a breach of data so uh, we are working with the financial institutions globally and we are cognizant of uh, the data protection and the risk that are attached to the leakage of data so there are certain um, you know sort of practices which come through pci council which is which is uh, you know uh, uh, so the pci council is sort of an uh, council which basically has issues uh, you know the policies and and regulations around it right so we we do uh, we do comply for for a, for a very very long time to logon ko pata hai ki kis tarah ka data unko rakhna hai aur kis tarah ka data unko nahi rakhna apne paas and the customers over the time are also in the financial sector are very disciplined very organized they do understand what sort of data they can share and what they can not share uh so we do not anyway even in our office we do not uh, access to data which is unsupervised uh we don't we don't do that uh because the risk stays the same you know even in the office uh, to have somebody else's data work from home mein hum log ne kiya ye hai because we are now connecting over vpn with with most of the customers so we had to protect uh, keep the keep this vpn tunnel very protective very very sort of secure to uske andar wo second factor aur jo baki jo sari cheeze hoti hain hardening of servers and infrastructure so we have we have taken those measures which actually were important to protect and encrypt you know this this vpn tunnel uh logon ko za pehle se kafi awareness thi you know they are they are sort of reminded again about their responsibility 
and uh, similarly the awareness is is also going to the customer so jo samne shuru mein baat ki thi ke agar hum you know communication zyada rakhe to things become much simpler to handle so it's just about awareness and communication right so you understand their pains and you address them quickly so for example abhi hamare yahan different teams have different different protocols and different styles and somebody has a morning stand up and then an you know evening stand up to is kisam ke jo bhi concerns hote hain you know function to function they did discuss about them you know solve them her problem could not have been foreseen you know in the in the mid of march many problems have been surfaced as we are sort of walking walking down this lane but as they come we are very quick to sort of discuss us among us with the customers and sort it out jaise maine pehle ek remark diya tha kyunki abhi lockdown hai to customers are okay on on so many areas but once this lockdown eases up so the customers uh, will also make their own policies stricter uh, where they'll say ki ji aapko aana hi padega kuch kaam ke liye you know uh, bank ke andar so so far so good but i think there's a very very positive change in the mindset both at the customer and which are the banks the regulator and and the service provider and i'm sure i'm quite sure the digital payments and uh, monishel uh, agree to it digital payments is set to grow at at least 3x the pace that it was expected to do 2 months ago so and 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 because every stakeholder government regulator financial institution and service provider as well as the customer and the merchant they all understand it appreciate it and wish to adopt it thank you shahzad uh, morris i would like to bring this question to you now uh, since uh, shahzad talked about the financial payments and the digital payments how are you seeing its adoption and the uh, what's the trend like on its use you know this is one of the big opportunities shahzad is absolutely right mobile wallet installations have increased 3 to 400% since this lockdown the pandemic has started 3 to 400%. So now you're finding people who are installing mobile wallet out of necessity because they need to pay each other and they can't reach each other, they can't go out. This technology has been around forever, it's fairly easy to use, but there was a, a behavioral kind of uh obstacle in going and actually trying installing the wallets. Well, now people have to do it because they need to. And the interesting thing is, you know, um the fintech that I'm a part of, Finja Uh, has a license from state bank we're an EMI we're the first ones to be granted uh, approval for the pilot so we're doing the pilot right now but from digitization we always knew that there's so much scope and potential now down to the kriana stores we're doing a lot of work with you know the kriana stores unko hum loans bhi dete hain aur um aur bhi kaam karte hain these kriana stores in every neighborhood now are very 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 eager to get online they're very eager to process orders from people in the neighborhood who are saying ke main aa nahi sakta and you know i'd like some and day mujhe doodh chahiye mujhe roti chahiye mujhe ye chahiye and now they're trying to scramble to figure out a way how they can do it through whatsapp so you're finding it going from the top of the pyramid all the way down and this is when society transforms the government has shortcutted a lot of red tape in allowing online transactions and payments and automation state bank has been just so supportive in the lockdown they shortcut uh the time it took to do the pilot because they understood how urgent it was to do that so these rails have already been laid and you know we've been working on a project you know as a combination of rosie and with with kind of with finja where we launched a crowd funding platform and now we've raised about 55 lakhs on that platform in about a week a week and a half and through digital means we're spraying it to blue collar workers who've lost their jobs through easy pesa ids nobody has to leave the room and these guys are getting paid we've already helped over 20000 individuals in one week so it's phenomenal what rails have been laid in this country and how users are adopting to this behavior change this is the opportunity so while we're talking about you know how we're training our workforce to work from home yes all of that's good but every business every it company should be looking at how they're going to transform their business model because the world has changed forever and pakistan is an ocean of opportunity right now everybody has smartphones internet connected they're starting to use payments there's a distribution problem today we can reach people in our country that we never had the ability to reach before and we can do it cheaply so fantastic opportunity 
Thank you, Moniz. Um, I would like to br bring a different question to you, Mujib. Um, you know, it, it's usually thought as uh, that BPO sector and the call centers require proper setup, uh, infrastructure in place, and especially the uh, stable internet, uh, you know, while we were handling that uh, IP whitelisting issue. So number one, how did your company uh, manage the recent blocking of uh, whitelisted IPs? And on top of that, how do you see that the BPO sector will be transforming in Pakistan after this is over? Do you see more businesses coming to Pakistan in, in, in terms of BPO? Yeah, I think about us, we, uh, again, it sort of goes back to, uh, you know, when you talk about the uh, regulatory and governance requirements, that's sort of where the whitelisting uh, or the IP issues fall under. We uh, globally, as well as obviously in Pakistan, we take that uh, on, on priority. I'm sure as a lot of our businesses do. Uh, so we try to be extremely proactive about it, uh, make certain that you know all the paperwork, unfortunately, uh, again, uh, PTA uh, has been uh, very, very helpful in a lot of instances as well uh, in trying to streamline the process, make it more efficient. But as it stands right now, it does require a little bit of paperwork. It's uh, it's not difficult to do. It's just, you know, tedious and complex. So we, we tried to make sure that we had all of that in place. So we weren't really impacted by the whitelisting or, or, or uh, blockage of IPs uh, at all. As far as infrastructure is concerned, uh, again, I think all of us have spoken about the need to uh, invest in the right technologies and tools. Uh, having cloud-based applications will reduce your dependency on physical hardware for which you will require people to be in a particular vicinity. Uh, call centers can absolutely uh, do that. Large captive offices can absolutely do that, such as us, uh, you know, or subsidiaries or uh, global locations of large companies uh, can definitely benefit from from that as well by investing in the right technology. I think as far as resources or, or opportunity is concerned, uh, to I want to be cognizant of time as well. I, I think very briefly what I'll say is the opportunity, as 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 Munis and Shazad both pointed out, I think is is immense. The good thing was that in coordination with uh, the federal government as well as with the provincial governments call centers were allowed to operate uh, continuously even during the strictest form of uh, forms of lockdown with at least 50% staff. And that gave us an advantage when other large um, offshoring countries or destinations such as Philippines was under a complete lockdown, people couldn't get to the office. India had a very specific situation or similar situation as well. And that resulted in, uh, you know, an opportunity for us. And I know personally of at least five or six entities from the same space that leveraged that opportunity, that reached out. So they were handling a client that had, you know, operations in either India or Philippines. And they shifted that business to Pakistan because we are the ones that were open. So entities that had the robustness and foresight to invest in the right tools and technology that could help them in this or any other situation, a cloud-based application or server or tool is good under normal circumstances as well. Um, and it would certainly help in such a circumstance as well. So I think that um, from that perspective, to, to answer the question around, you know, will it bring more opportunity? I think it has and it will continue to, provided companies have a strong foundation uh, locally, number one. Number two, I think it's um, it, it's super critical that we uh, sort of look at at showcasing and uh, you know branding our capabilities in that sector as well as you know other sectors, but this sector specifically, uh, in more more in a more robust manner, so that you know the the example I gave you of the five or six entities, they were able to opportunistically take you know opportunistic sounds like a bad word, but it isn't. They were able to capitalize on the opportunity and really take advantage of it. Uh, while the chips were down, for a lot of other people, it was, they, took, they used it for their advantage. So I think there, there's something in it for other people to follow as well. Great. Thank you. Um, Shamim, uh, it's, a, it's a bit vague for, uh, a question uh, because people are now considering hiring and, you know, 
people remotely since we have all gone into work from home. And uh, we have seen that uh, now you don't actually need to hire people in your own uh, city or in your own vicinity where they can come to office every day. So uh, how are you uh, going forcing hiring in your company? And what, what do you think uh, about uh, hiring people from remote areas, especially in uh, third tiers, from third year, tier cities? So, uh, yeah, I think, I think this, is, this is the time uh, because now that uh, everybody is working from home and we've already trialed and tested the whole uh, work from home um, you know, uh, idea, uh, it's not uh, required anymore to hire from within your close proximity. You can hire from other cities as well. So, you know, cities like Hyderabad and uh, places like those, Multan and those places, you can hire from them. Uh, so, so that, you know, you, you, aapka, um, and you have a wider uh, uh, audience to and, and, and a wider skill set to basically bring on board. You can bring on more, more, more diversity. And again, because I'm from the diversity uh, you know, uh, committee, but now that everybody is working from home, I think hiring more women. And bringing more uh, women on board uh, is going to be simpler and easier, uh, given the fact that uh, you're giving the same opportunity to any men. So you should uh, now give that the same opportunity to women. But I, I would like to go back to you know uh, how um, to what Moni said initially about um, uh, opportunities uh, in, in in the financial sector. I wanted to bring it to something in the uh, services sector. So what I've um, in the last couple of weeks, I was I had the opportunity to talk to a couple of uh, my colleagues in the industry. Uh, and ask them uh, how their bottom line looked and you know uh, where, whether they had a drop in revenue. Uh, there's two things that I noticed that was a trend and that I wanted to bring here and uh, so that because, because our members are listening to us is one, uh, most, most of the people who actually um, had a drop in revenue is because they were uh, providing services, software services to specific verticals. So maybe you know to one or two verticals. So when that uh, vertical took a drop, they, their uh, bottom line actually took a drop. So um, one of the things that I would like to mention here is that if you're in the services industry, don't get comfortable in just one or two verticals. You should have a um, you know um, a variety of verticals that you work with. So for example, in genetic, while we also work with logistics and tourism uh, and, and the concierge industry, we do a lot of work around smart healthcare and ed tech, which have actually you know, uh, taken a rise. So our bottom line wasn't affected. We actually did better. Then we would we we were, we were uh, pre-COVID, so that's one of the things that I wanted to mention. And the other thing that I mentioned, uh, I would like to mention is a lot of people were saying that uh, U.S. Se customers drop or uh, falan jagah se zyada drop hain because the whole of the U.S. is closed down. And I would tell them my whole uh, ninety percent of my customer base is the U.S. How come I don't see that? So one of the things that I noticed is. Um, it's very important to not just focus on bringing more customers on board, but it's, all, it's also very important to focus on retaining those customers. So if you have uh, customer loyalty and you know, if you have legacy customers and your business model is like that, in, in, in times of need, in, in like times like these, you will uh, eventually not end up losing customers, but uh, having stronger ties with your customers, uh, definitely. So yeah, that, that's something I want to add. Thank you, Shamim. I think you're also very lucky uh, in terms of that, <laughs> since people are mentioning that they're losing customers. So it's good to know that you're, it's, it's all safe and good at you. And, uh, but, uh, and, and I would like to uh, ask one question to Morris now, that since you, you know, we're going to see a lot of layoffs, we even Pasha did a survey, we saw that a lot, a lot after two to three, uh, after three to six months, people may, there, we can see around 89% layoffs. You know, that was just the data speaking. So that was, there is a fear of that. But you are running a, a job portal and you know, we, all, we are also seeing some jobs coming in on our WhatsApp groups. And, uh, but I would like to ask you that how, what are you at, how the trends moving on Rosie and otherwise, and how will you be seeing the job trends changing after during these times and after these times okay great yeah i want to talk to you about three things you know one of the things is that of course there are a lot of layoffs and i think one of the things is there's a stigma there's a fear of organizations to actually announce that they're doing layoff it's a nightmare for it to go on social media oh no layoff kar diye zalim log hain wo kyon kar rahe 
because people generally just don't understand that if you're not making any money, how can you pay people? It becomes an existential threat where you could basically implode the company and nobody would get paid and the company would be gone. So this is a very hard communication when you go onto the social media and talk about it. So you don't hear these stories about layoffs, but it's a business reality. You know, when you don't have enough to, uh, uh, to hand to all of your employees, you have to do a downsizing in order to survive. We've seen tremendous amount of people being kind of downsized and more in a silent way. And there are a lot of people on the job market right now. As I was saying earlier, April, May, the revenue went down 50% because people just weren't hiring. In fact, they were laying off. But the people who were hiring, it became very clear, those were IT companies. So by and large, the 50% of revenue we had came almost entirely from the IT sector, who's working on IT, like outsourced projects in the US and Germany. And there's a compelling reason for international clients who are also economically hurt right now to find cheaper ways to kind of implement their code. So I think it's a good opportunity for IT outsourcing back to Pakistan. You've already seen the exchange rate and kind of rupee has devalued, so it makes us more effective in terms of cost. So I think IT outsourcing, this is a golden time for IT outsourcing. You know, a business that may not have been super interesting, I think, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for that. Um, so yes, there's, there's a lot of labor on the market. Now, what am I seeing? I'm seeing that businesses in Pakistan are going to leverage this talent and I think freelancing and gig-based work is going to increase dramatically after this whole thing is over. And because we're already okay with work from home, there's a lot of great people on the bench right now. You need a short assignment, you need a logo design, you need a marketing study, you need SEO done, you need an Android app. This is going to be farmed out to freelance talent. And you know what? That freelance talent is going to earn more money than they earn on a full-time job because they're going to grab these small opportunities. The other thing that I want to talk about is Pakistan has traditionally, one of our problems is we haven't innovated. We've been importing, we haven't been exporting, we haven't been building anything, we've been reselling. And during this time, one of the interesting things I'm finding is that companies are genuinely starting to innovate because they have to. And it's so refreshing to see our creative minds doing all kinds of creative things to adopt to a situation. So I think that innovation and creativity and hopefully export has started to move now, which could be a positive effect. Third and last thing I want to talk about, something I'm very passionate about, if you know me, is female employment and the impact on females of this whole, um, whole issue right now. Females were already at, at a drawback because of transportation. Very few females ride a motorcycle. They take an auto rickshaw or Uber. So a female uh, spends about you know, five to 10 times more than a man would spend on transportation to the office and back. So if you have a female who earns 20,000 rupees, she's spending about half of her salary on transporting to the office and back, and the man earning 20,000 rupees is spending 2,000 on fuels for the motorbike. And now that was already a problem. Now with this lockdown, and as we're starting to get back to work, and Uber's not running, and Kareem's aren't, and you know, rickshaws aren't, females are stuck at home. And even if they want to go back, they can't go back. And so I think this is urgent. It's urgent to get females mobile and independent. You look at Malaysia, you look at Indonesia, you look at India, women are riding scooters and bikes. That stigma needs to be killed. We need to encourage our females to be independent because they are a very, very critical part of the workforce. So these are three opportunities um, that, you know, that I see that we can solve right now, inshallah, if we have the will. Um, Shazad, uh, before we move towards the uh, concluding remarks from every uh, uh, panelist, I would like to ask you, uh, number one, uh, being one of the uh, fintech companies, uh, usually interaction with commercial banks, ke ho hai, and I've also seen you wearing suits almost every day when we, you know, when we were meeting in person. Uh, so how, how is the dress code should be um, for, for, for work, work from home? Are you, do you have anything uh, in place, like a policy that everybody should wear, uh, you know, a, a collared shirt? Otherwise, you know, you should go and change it before we do a stand-up meeting in the morning. So, so uh, you know, I think it's, all, it's basically, um, it's, it's all about what is critical. If the employee uh, morale is critical, if his productivity is critical, you have to let him live his real natural life 
and be innovative, creative, and you know, sort of really sort of you know supportive to the job. Which means you should not care about how his beard look, how is the hairstyle, is he wearing a round neck or is he really sort of you know all all sort of, you know dressed up. Um, so I'm 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 wearing a kurta today, right? So this is very unlike me. So you lead yeah, from the yeah. front. If you started, if you started to come in the meetings with with a very sort of dressed up thing, others will be forced to at least try to sort of you know appear in a bit of formal formal attire, right? So don't do that. So I don't do that. Most of my office meetings, all right, they're not video meetings. They're audio meetings. So we don't use video. Okay. It serves two purposes. One, you cannot be sure. Is, is somebody, I mean, you've got 400 employees, right? Not everybody has got space in the house where you can be sure that it's a, sort of, you really want to show that to everybody else, right? So, so don't, don't force people to open videos unless the person is comfortable opening the video. Second, uh, the second thing is how, what he's wearing, right? So we have a lot, of, a lot of social taboos, you know, about how do we dress up outside with the, with the real world and how, do, how are we dressed up when we are at home? So when you don't force people to open the videos, people are, are sort of comfortable uh, lying on the lying in the bed and taking a call. In sub cheezon say you inculcate the culture of a family. You don't care about these banality elements. What you care about is the person's wellness, his his sort of you know satisfaction with the job, his his commitment to the cause, and. You don't intrude. You don't interfere. Wo ghar par hai banda ya. You know, he's not coming to office. Uh, wo ghar par baitha hai. Let him stay. Jaa baitha hai kaam karne. So, so, so I think this is, this is what really has changed. Uh, with the customers, by the way, before one year, I have stopped wearing tie. All right. So as as yeah, as we're that. getting more into the digital and fintech, uh, I have started to stop wearing tie. Right. So 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 I think overall the even in the financial sector. These uh, these overdressed attire sort of you know easing up. Now the problem is that because everyone has to understand what is a smart casual and what is casual and what is not suitable. So that's why you sort of balance uh, balance it in the in the in the office environment. Ghar ke andar we recommend video kam karein, audio zada karein. I think this is this is this gives more more sort of you know uh, it will ease up the lives of your employees. Uh, as we as we are moving towards the end of this uh, conversation, would you like to uh, say any concluding remarks, Shahzad? Uh, so, this is important to understand what the world is going through. So, don't don't stay in a fool's paradise. Uh, so, we may have come here today, talked about how fantastic the world is. You know, three x, four x, the business is growing. But let's let's agree to it that the world is seeing uh, a depression or economic meltdown, which is comparable to the Great Depression. So, the global GDP is is estimated to be down by three percent. So, minus three percent in 2020. You know, which is serious, right? It was in January estimate this was supposed to be three percent. So, this actually is a six percent dampening of the global GDP in 2020. So this is real. So 2020 is about survival. Don't become over optimistic. Don't work on your whims. So try to be more, more sort of, you know, uh, spend some more time where you're spending your money. So this is number one. Number two, spend. So this was about spend wisely. The other thing is the 2021 estimates of the world is about starting from minus 3% this year it is expected to be 5.8% next year. So 2021 global GDP is estimated to be 5.8%, which means that we have to invest wisely, but get ready for 2021, you know? So instead of uh, sort of cursing ourselves that we did not, so let me do it this way. We have to survive in 2020, recover faster and reinvent and readjust within 2020 for 2021. You will have a bounty in 2021 if you do the 2020 to 2020 very wisely. IT is a sector which is considered among the, among the net positive even in, even in 2020. Right? So uh, 
So IT is a great sector to be in. Everybody is now trying to digitize, regardless of if it is Kiryana store, like Monish said, or if it is about you know um, uh, you know any 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 other textile or some other shop. So IT is a great sector to focus on. Like I said, survive, survive, recover, and uh, reinvent. 2021 is a year to real make money, but 2020 be safe and collaborate as much as you can. Thank you, Shazad. Uh, Mujib, before you give us the concluding remarks, I would like you uh, to uh, comment on the female employment and how it should drastically increase in Pakistan. Oh, absolutely. I think it's it's refreshing to see so many champions for, for diversity and uh, pushing forward uh, with opportunities for women. S&P Global, uh, it's, a, it's a core tenant of ours. We, we, right now, we have about 25% of our employees are women. Uh, we've, uh, we work very closely with the U.S. Pakistan Women Council. We have a pledge to mentor 20,000 women over the next three years uh, in, in Pakistan in STEM skills and uh, women entrepreneurs as well. I think, uh, as I think Shamim mentioned earlier, it, this is a great opportunity uh, for us to uh, equip and enable uh, women who, for whatever different kinds of reasons, weren't able to commute to uh, the office. And that was the reason why they couldn't uh, either continue working or, uh, you know, even decide to work. I think this, uh, the, the tools and capabilities that this situation has taught a lot of companies, uh, they can leverage those and really drive uh, such a significant uh, portion of our population towards contributing to the economy. I think as Monas very rightly said, uh, we're missing out on more than 50% of the population not contributing uh, to the economy not uh, and utilizing their capabilities and their skills. And this is an excellent opportunity uh, for, for, for companies uh, to, to really leverage, uh, as I said, these, these new tools or, and these new circumstances that these times have taught us. So uh, we, we definitely would be continuing uh, to build our focus uh, towards that. And I, I really, really uh, encourage everybody to, uh, uh, to sort of uh, consider that as well. As far as concluding remarks, I think as uh, we've talked about a lot of opportunities, there are challenges as well, as Shazad said, uh, you know, let's first of all, stay safe, uh, look after your employees, continue to develop, uh, you know, investing in their skill development. That's what's going to help long term uh, as well. And uh, I think Monas identified uh, a, a good sort of mix as well in terms of being innovative. Uh, read, you know, looking at diversifying your portfolio that Shamim spoke about as well, I think is super critical on how companies can uh, leverage uh, the uncertainty in, in this year, maybe creeping into next year, but the opportunities will definitely uh, be there for the ones who are able to get through uh, this circumstance. So invest in your people uh, so that they can uh, be ready for, uh, with new skills that uh, as new challenges come, continue to innovate, uh, so that you can uh, take the opportunities that come your way uh, successfully. Thank you, Ajay. Um, uh, Shamim, if you can give us the concluding remarks. remarks. Yeah, sure. Thank you. So I, I just want to go back to what Shazad was saying uh, with the with the video versus audio thing. And I'm, I, that again, this was really new to me because uh, with with our with our company and we have we have a, uh, a rule of thumb always video. Uh, the reason being uh, that uh, it, it doesn't matter what they're wearing or whatever. The reason being it's always very nice and um, you know uh, warm when you see your employee and you can talk to them uh, real time. You know, so a lot of communication, you can have eye contact, a lot of communication happens uh, through, uh, you know, reading fresh facial expressions and understanding where they're coming from. So for me, over the past few years, uh, video communication with employees, with customers, everybody has always worked. So this is something that we try to do, unless until we're just trying to save bandwidth, which we are these days, because uh, bandwidth is really poor these days. So yeah, that's, that's, that, that's something that I wanted to add with regard to genetic. The other thing uh, with regard to diversity, and I wanted to you know, uh, uh, ask Monis if he can add that to his final remarks, is uh, how does the diversity portfolio look like now, post-COVID, at Rosie? Has it gone up 
or uh, do you see a, a, an incline in there? So that's something that I'm very interested in. Again, um, going back to uh, diversity, uh, and we're not, I'm just not interested in uh, gender diversity, but all forms of diversity. So, you know, hiring people from uh, smaller towns and, um, you know, villages, I would, I would be very happy, and that's something that we actually very actively do at Genetic, that we hire people from small towns and villages across uh, a same, not just that, we send our, uh, uh, you know, SMEs to mentor these people, train them and mentor them, and then bring them to Karachi. And, um, you know, so that is something that I'm really interested in to learn from Monis, how that is working with all the work from home uh, thing. Final remarks for me uh, would be, uh, like Shazad said, um, you need 2020, you need to make sure the survival mode is on. So, you know, you need to make sure that you take care of your finances, uh, if you're, especially if you're a small or medium sized company, be very, very cautious with your finances in 2020. And please put the money, you know, put your money where the mouth is. That's, uh, that's very important. One of the other things that, I think uh, that I was uh, actually going through one of the uh, talks earlier on, and uh, that was very alarming is that, um, so low income countries like Pakistan uh, will probably experience this crisis in a reverse form, is what I heard. So while rich countries have suffered outbreaks first, shutting down the economy second, COVID would, uh, you know, so I, for, for me, I feel that COVID actually hasn't arrived so far in developing countries with the numbers rising actually now. So, you know, uh, uh, so we've already hampered a global economic downturn and with everything opening up so quickly in Pakistan, I think that COVID will arrive now and, you know, we, it'll, it'll be disastrous if we are not safe, if we are not smart about it. So for everybody and anybody, especially in the IT sector, because you can work from home. So even though that the government has announced that they're lifting the lockdown, I think you need to be very, very smart about it for yourself and your, for your employees' uh, safety as well to you know, uh, look at the situation and you know, slowly and gradually, like you close it down, slow, be very slow and gradual and not just jump into it. So yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. Uh, thank you, Shamim. Uh, Boris, before uh, you know, I, I give my remarks at the end, would you like to answer to Shamim's question? Uh, the trends are happening on the Rosie. Yeah, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think uh, in terms of female employment, transportation has always been a big issue. I can measure female employment uh, relative to ease of transportation and cost of transportation. So transportation, female employment are so interlinked. And now what's happened is with transportation kind of networks halting and becoming inaccessible, it's made it very hard for females to reach their workplaces and yes, there's a trend of work from home, but a large percentage of employers will require employees to be at the office. So I think there's an urgent need to do a cultural transformation to allow females to encourage them to buy those scooters, to be independent in terms of transportation. I think this is the quickest way to impact the GDP and re-include them in the workforce. This is a tough time for your female employees. I'm sure all of you are seeing this you know, across the board. Uh, in terms of the concluding statements, my remarks, I just have one thing to say. And I think that thing is that this is a time to re-explore what you are doing as a business. We get stuck in operational mode and we work really hard and we make certain profits or thin margins, we keep working. This is a hard reset. This is a blessing. This is an opportunity to draw it completely from scratch and to kind of extrapolate where the world is going and where you have the competitive advantage. IT, it, uh, IT as a sector is a hero of the economy right now. We don't need to import any raw goods to have exports. We don't use USD, the foreign exchange, to buy cotton or raw material and then export it out with value add. We have the native brains, right? We have 2 million people joining the workforce every year. We have the ninth largest workforce in the world. So IT is now getting recognized nationally in the government as being very, very strategic. And I think that's good. But IT companies need to today redraw, reinvent, re-explore, and invest. During the slow time is the best time to build products and to change your model. And I think those will pay off uh, very, very handsomely in the future. Uh, uh, th thank you, Morris. Uh, thank you very much for your remarks. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have to run because my kids are outside and my birthday sure. is in uh, six, th seven minutes.
seven minutes from now. So I'm getting very nasty look. So if right. you could please excuse me. It was great talking to you guys. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy birthday, Mones. Right. Uh, so um, for our viewers uh, and our members, it's, it's a great time to unlearn, relearn, and learn again and again, change their models, diversify their, uh, um, their businesses and their ventures. And on top of that, uh, as uh, Mujib rightly put it there, that we have to empathize and understand that we are all humans and we are in this together. So we have to stay safe and we have to take care of each other while moving forward in this in these crucial times. So take care, everybody. Thank you for signing up. This is Talha signing off from Fasha. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Talha. Thanks, everyone.